Hello, my name is Connor Hanaki, and I'll be talking into the defense of illegal immigrants. A big issue in current affairs is the topic of immigration. But first, how does it connect to the stimulus? This is based on this is Many of the source materials highlighted the competing interests of individualism and collectivism. And when viewing the immigration issue through this lens, I contend that this calls for an individualistic approach. Allow me to explain. Immigration has many benefits to it, as it allows for, for cultures and traditions to come together, and in some cases, mix together. And it also helps benefit the economy as, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, 18, about 18.1% of the work, U.S. workforce is, is immigrants. However, the problem is that there is, that immigrants come into the U.S. either as legal, documented, versus illegal, undocumented immigrants. And when you enter the U.S. either through registering to become a formal citizen, or they enter without doing so, thereby avoiding the, the duties and rights of citizenship. And current efforts to deal with immigrants are ineffective, use resources inefficiently, and result in them facing harsh conditions. So a better approach would be to eliminate the motivation for illegal immigrants to enter the U.S. without registering. In this next section, we must ask the question, are illegal immigrants truly illegal? And when answering, we must consider the connotation behind the phrase, which it invokes moral judgment and linguistically lumps illegal immigrants with individuals who violate our criminal laws. Godfrey Engerberson, a professor of sociology at Erasmus University, Rotterdam, reports how, quote, the perception of criminal illegal immigrants reflects the division between wanted and unwanted immigrants, which is a result of the shift towards a restrictive policy. But many of these illegal immigrants do not mean harm, and are often seeking better opportunities, safety, and security for their families. And these immigrants have chosen to go against the system to become registered as citizens, so they can live life more easily. Which is similar to how Ted Thomas, director of command in the US Army, along with the Yard of Charlotte, Discuss instances where soldiers make decisions contrary to what authorities command in order to make a better choice. In other words, the term illegal is used to separate some individuals from others to choose who is to be welcomed based on subjective morality. Moving on to the next matter, many illegal immigrants are not much different from individuals known as asylum seekers. Now, asylum seekers are migrants who flee from their nation because of oppression or dangerous living conditions. And, under international law, nations are to required to accept immigrants with a valid claim of asylum. In Didier Fasson, a French sociologist, found that, quote, asylum seekers today are essentially constructed within the framework of the emergence of a third world problem. Therefore, asylum seekers are often seeking refuge within a safe nation, and many, asylum and many undocumented immigrants may also have valid asylum claims as they escape the clutches of their home country. Entering the country illegally might not be necessary for many people if the system to gain legal entry and citizenship were more efficient and less cumbersome. So first, what makes registration unfair? For one, registration takes about a decade or longer to complete until they can finally become citizens. That is to say, Time it takes to register to be a citizen is far too long for many immigrants seeking asylum. And so many more are becoming illegal. So society as a whole suffers from illegal immigrants because there are insufficient resources to meet the aids, the needs and aids of everyone who arrives. These immigrants need food, money, and shelter in their new nation, which comes from from the government in the form of aid and taxes paid by other citizens. And in some instances, the government uses tax revenues to help undocumented immigrants with food and shelter, but the shelters were high quality, meaning they costed more. However, 
Karen Strike, a reporter covering federal law enforcement, explained that when the government tried moving them to cheaper but lower quality shelters, the immigrants were ahead happy and began protesting, which, which annoyed the taxpayers fleeing the bill. And so the effort to help aid illegal immigrants can be viewed as using too many resources with little hope to improve the system. And although the illegal immigrants have taken tolls on public resources, it would be morally right to find a way to. Because on one hand, it reduces incentives to enter the country illegally, while also improving the country, while also improving the efficiency of the system in dealing compassionately with undocumented immigrants who have taken who have been contributing members of American society for periods of many years. Most immigrants have arrived in our country to be safe from the struggles of their home countries, and in turn, to help strengthen the labor force and enrich our society with the influence of their unique cultures. And even when we, they are rejected, or the process takes very long, they take up the courage to disobey the government to improve the lives of their families, which is portrayed by, by Doris Lessing, who made, wrote the novel The Habit of Loving. We're under the section, through the tunnel, she illustrates the boy's desire to enter the underwater tunnel. And although he failed multiple times, he progressively learns to over and, and eventually overcomes it. Ultimately, illegal immigration immigrants are morally right for entering the land undocumented because of the courage and effort they put into living in a safe environment. Reworking the registration system to become a citizen is the best way to deal with the growing number of undocumented immigrants. Many of, these, Im, many of these immigrants are like asylum seekers in that they seek refuge with their home nation and is facing struggles. And if becoming a citizen is, takes very long and is too difficult to complete, many will avoid it because it is easier the other way. Hence, countless immigrants have taken the courage to go against the registration system and enter the U.S. immediately. But here's the thing. This is not a boycott to go against the entirety of the U.S. government. It's not an act, but it's more or less a way for the society to learn and deal with them soon. In short, if we want to start seeing major changes in our nation, we need to work as a society to modernize the current system in favor of the enforcement. Thank you for listening, and these are my sources. Terrific. Thanks, Connor. Okay, I got a couple of questions for you, and then we'll wrap this up. So to start off, did your research go in a different direction than you originally expected when you first read the stimulus? Yes, I was originally going for a little broader term in terms of individuality, but as soon as I researched a little more, I, I, saw, I saw a lot of potential from illegal immigration and just the stories are all really interesting and it's just interesting to see how they go against the government to uh, seek refuge Okay, terrific. And then as a follow-up to that, what additional questions emerged while you were doing your research? Like if you were to do this again, what extra avenues would you explore? I'd probably look into other, like other solutions others would come up with, like green cards or helping the nations that are, where they're struggling from. I might also, uh, I would also look into a little more to help if, like, how we can handle the shelter situation a little better than we do now. Terrific. Thanks.